Hey YouTube, this is TCA Gaming. In this video, we're going to look at a few purchases, uh, a PSA return, and then I'm not even sure what the the last part is. It looks like somebody may have sent me some pretty cool stuff um, in some packages, kind of like a mystery thing. But we're going to start off with. Looks like we have. This is a purchase from Undercat Cards. So there's all his inf or her information. Lauren Showers got the email, Facebook, YouTube, <coughs> and the eBay user ID. Looks like they threw in a free uh, Maractus and Ghastly. Very cool. I always appreciate the free cards. Thank you for that. And I bought a Mint Near Mint Tops Chrome Mew. Let's look at it. Front side looks pretty good, I would say. Well, some scratches right there. You guys can probably make it out. Usually these are pretty tough to scratch up, but it goes even into the Chrome part of it. Uh, let's check out the back side. Doesn't look too bad. Ooh, pretty bad indention all the way up to the right side, and then crease up there too. So definitely not mint near mint. Uh, I mean, it looks great. It looks good from about this far away, but I think if you uh, get close to it, you can definitely see damage even on the front side, which is really tough to damage. But um. This was at the time. This was the only Mew that I could see on eBay. I was looking for a PSA 10 one personally. This one's definitely not. It's probably about a four, maybe a three. With that long indention and the crease, it's kind of tough. It might pass with something like a five, just because it, you know, it's really it's got a good front-looking side other than the scratch. But, anyways, there's their information. I may have to reach out to them because that's uh, definitely not mint near mint. But thank you for the free cards. Next up, we have a Misty Gem Mint 10 First Edition. Ironically enough, I had one of these on Troll and Toad I don't know, two, three months ago. And I, had it, I was selling it for like 125 bucks. I paid almost double for this one. I had forgotten I'd sent some cards, to, or I'd sent one to them to sell. A lot of times I send stuff to Troll and Toad when it's uh, priced a lot lower, and by the time it sells, it's way underpriced. I mean, you may be able to find some of my stuff there for a lot cheaper than on eBay or anywhere else. Next up, we have Nito King. Got this from old Blastoise from Air. I believe this is a consigner. Sometimes I get that stuff really fast from places like PWCC, and then this one I think come directly from a buyer or from the seller. Uh, it took uh, a little bit longer, but this is a thin stamp. See right there. Very good centering. Backside condition is really nice as well. So I'm definitely happy with this tin. If you guys ever go shopping on eBay, just use my link down there in the description. It helps me out. It's a little kickback. <clears throat> Hopefully I don't kick over my camera. All right, next up we have, thank you TCA Gaming. Visit me on YouTube at Dan the Pokeman. So Dan the Pokeman, do that cool looking right you. He sent me some cards to send a PSA. He had me raw review them. He also wanted me to show the review on YouTube, and the reason I review them before is because right now this card, you know, a good 18 inches in front of my face, and it may not get the exact light that it needs to get the proper review, so I try to review beforehand. But I'm going to show you guys this one and let you know what I think about it. So when I was looking at this one, it actually looks really clean, pretty nice. Backside looks really good. The... I gave it a 9, and I gave it a 9 because of the centering. See, it's slightly off to the left. It's got thinner and thicker, and then there's also a white dot up there. However, I think it may have a really long shot at a 10. Next up, we have Dark Espion. Now, looking at this one, it looks pretty good. You see a little bit of a print line down here. I think I saw one in between the ears when I was looking at it in a strong light. But otherwise, it looks pretty good on the front. Then on the back side, it actually looks really nice as well, except there's one little print dot right there, white dot. So I put this also at a 9. However, I do think that it has a, a little bit better shot than the Raikou at a 10 if they miss that uh, scratch on the front. All right, next up we have this Shining Noctowl. looks pretty good. Looking on the back side, you know, it almost looks... Like you would have a really decent shot at a 10. 
The, um, I gave this one a 9-10 grade. I think uh, PSA will either miss it or overlook, but there is a texture line. You can kind of see it showing through right there. And that's just from the, the shining part of the Noctowl. All shinings pretty much have this. Well, just about all shinings have them. I'm not going to say all of them. But most of the time, PSA does not dock for that. So I would say this has a decent shot at a 10. All right, next up we have Dark Blastoise. I'm trying to remember what I saw on this one. I think it was just a little bit of spotting in between his um, shell pieces right there. You can kind of see it. It almost looks like hollow pattern, but I don't think it is. It's right there where the swirl is. And then on the back side, notice it does have some a few white dots across the top and on that corner and then on the bottom but again they're really small so I would give this an 8 to 9 grade um, on a good day I think it would get a 9 and then uh, if they're pretty strict it would probably get to 8 next up we have Erica's Venusaur I'm trying to remember I believe there was a couple really light print lines with just little scratches that I saw in the hollow foil you can kind of see a vertical one right there going straight through into his foot it's really light back side yeah there it is this little white dot down there I gave this one a nine it's really nice for an Erica's Venusaur and again you know it something like that could get the 10 if it's a uh, if the stuff is overlooked this one um, you can see right in here there's several little scratches but because the holographic background is so dark, sometimes this kind of stuff would be missed. I believe there was another one up here by his ear. Yeah, you can see that. All right, going to the back side, top and bottom, or the top edges are okay. The bottom has a few white nicks. I gave this one an eight. I'm pretty confident in that one getting an eight. However, if they overlook it, I mean, you never know. I have seen weaker cards get nines before. Next up, we have the Butterfree First Ed Error. Now I think on this one, in the first set era, it's got a D, it's got a little ink bubble with the one, so it turns into a D. I think with this one, you can kind of see it, it's got like a little bit of extra card on the bottom. Sometimes they see that kind of thing, sometimes they don't. Looking on the back side, centering is off just a little bit. And then there is a white dot right there. I gave this one a 9 because I don't think that... Uh, they will for sure count off for that, but if they do, they may even bump it down. But for me, I would say this is a 9 based on that white dot on the back side. And then last we have Clefable. So this Clefable is pretty good. I believe there was a print line on the bottom. It was light. Maybe not. But if you look up here beside her ear, you can kind of see it's just like little spotty stuff that may detract from the overall view of the card. Gonna take it out so you can see that got a little white dot on the back of the surface of the card. That corner, a little white dot right there. Again, nothing too big. I actually think this is a really nice example for the Clefable. I put it at an 8-9. I would actually lean more towards the 8 if it was me grading it. However, I think it has a, it does have a shot at the 9. So there is Dan the Pokemans. PSA submission. I think he submitted some really quality, really good quality cards. And um, I'm excited to see what happens when it comes back. All right, next up we have, here we go. Hi, Rusty. I just want to say thank you for your recent purchase. Also, thank you for being part of the Pokemon community. You are the reason I became a Pokemon collector and seller. Keep doing an awesome job on your YouTube videos. We have all learned so much from you. I hope this PSA 10 Charizard from D and P Stormfront gets you one step closer to completing your set. Take care and thanks again. At Rockets Charizard 88, Manny. So I remember buying this on eBay, but I definitely don't remember all this other stuff. We've got one for the first, second, and third. So we're going to open up this one first, do it in the order that he has. Hopefully, I don't knock over my camera. I have a tendency to jerk things. Alright. That's some masking tape. If you ever do use tape, definitely try to use that. Alright. Let's see what we got going on here. 
Ooh, first we have a Reshiram and Charizard GX. Look at that. Wow. Looks like it might have come right out of a pack. It's got almost like a dark color to it. That's pretty cool. Wow, thank you so much. Card number two is... Oh, check it out. We got some uh, art box. I believe it's art box. Action, or these aren't the action flips. Uh, stickers. Let's see what we have in here. We're starting out with Charmander. Uh-oh, we got the Charmeleon. And, oh, wow, look at that Charizard. Really cool. So you could get these. Um, they're like little silver packs. They used to be really cheap. I don't know if they still are or not. But you get 10 stickers to one of the packs. And then you could, uh, let's put it in the background. You could just put them on your binder or whatever you wanted to do. Some people grade these. Or at least I know that I've seen the action flip ones graded. I'm pretty sure I've seen these graded too. All right, card number three. Oh, look at that. You got the Charizard from the most recent chest tin. This one is pretty tough to get in a tin. I sent off several. His looks pretty good, but usually there's like a little um, lip on the top or the bottom. Let's see if this one has it. Oh, yeah, you can see it just right there. I think that's going to make this one a pretty tough 10. I have seen a few online already. <clears throat> for some reason, my submission that I sent out with this has been there for a long time. And look at all these Charizards he's getting me. All right, number four. Cool, we got the Charizard GX from Burning Shadows. <clears throat> I believe this was the original Charizard GX. I'm trying to remember. I, th I believe it come out before the SM60. Yeah, because that should have been around the time of Shining Legends, and this was Burning Shadows was before Shining Legends. And then number five. Oh, wow, we got the Charizard EX from Flashfire. There was an 11, a 12, and a 13. The 13 was a Mega. The 11 was the one that was reprinted in the box. And then this is actually one of the harder to find ones, I guess because it's kind of got like a green, teal, or whatever um, color mixed in around the edge. So that's really cool. Thank you very much. And we still have two more packages to go, so this is what he wanted me to open up second. Let me pull it away from the camera. There we go. This rips off a little easier. Alright. That was a PSA graded card. Oh, wow. Check it out. We got an Evolutions Charizard. Wow. Thank you so much. Mint 9. Beautiful condition. I've never actually graded a 10 in this one. Not on the holo. I think I've graded maybe a few reverse hollows and I've graded a 10 for a customer before on this one. But I'm still looking for the 10 myself, so a 9 gets me really close because I am working on that Master Charizard collection. Alright, last up. This is the third package. It feels kind of thick. I wonder what's going to be in here. I know what, there should be one thing in, at least. There it is. This is the one. Alright, so. Uh, before this was, you know, the reprinted, uh, before the original base set was uh, reprinted in base set 2, there was also a reprint in Legendary Collection, and then there was also a reprint in Generation 4, which was in Stormfront, and that's what this is. So we've got the Gem Mint 10 Stormfront Charizard. Now, I was a little hesitant on this one because the centering is off somewhat, but you know what? To me, the condition on it looked really nice from what I can see. We're going to check it again now. Oh, yeah. It's got a little bit right there. That piece is on the case. So, great looking tin. You know, I'm okay with it being a little off center, but perfect. Man, look at all this other stuff that this seller threw into. I thank you so much for that. That is very generous of you. And um, I will definitely be putting this back into my collection and maybe some of these other ones will get tens too so thank you very much Manny <clears throat> then last for this video I'm going to show you guys a little uncut sheet that I picked up I'm going to tilt it up I've got a couple of these I try to pick them up whenever I can this is Topps Chrome and uh, you can kind of see it's a 3x3 three three. it's got Weedle, Meowth, Metapod you got the Golbat, Ivysaur is a cool one to have in the middle, Beedrill Abra, Dugtrio and then it's also got the Venusaur you can see on the back side here, these actually have a shot at uh, being Spectra, Sparkle, or Technochrome as well, but I've already looked over all the cards on this one and none of them are that variant holo pattern. 
But if you ever see these, I picked this up for 25 bucks. Honestly, I think they're worth closer to 100. I'm not 100% accurate on that. But like I said, um, I thought it was a pretty good deal, so I picked it up. And I put it back in my uncut sheet collection, which continues to grow. Maybe I'll show you guys that one day. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.